So three things before this new video gets started. First of all, I was in a film that my roommate made. Wait until the very end of the video to hear more details about it. Second of all, this is a new series I'm going to be doing called Tech for Thought. It's going to basically be me coming out here every Saturday talking about some new tech event or tech product or something related to the world of tech that is happening this week or in the last previous week that I finally get to talk about. It's going to be fun. It's going to take advantage of this new setup I have with the new lights and the new setup. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. And it'll allow me to get a video out to you guys every week. And third, yes, I know this is the third year in a row that I've been Doctor Who. But I was originally going to go as Star-Lord, but fortunately you guys think I am pretty much already Star-Lord every time I make a video. So here's some tech for thought that's quite scary enough for Halloween. Self-driving cars. If you've been in my family, you have known that me and my dad have had this argument for years and years about how far off self-driving cars are. But here's the thing, earlier this month, Tesla finally updated all of their Tesla Model S cars with autopilot, the new system of driving that enables their cars to actually drive themselves to a certain degree. Now, it doesn't allow you to just get in the car, press a button, and go to your destination, but it is a huge step forward for the world of autonomous driving. So basically, you get in the car, you get onto the highway, and once you activate it, you then flip a switch, and the car can steer itself, control gas, brake, signal, switch lanes, and even exit. However, though, for exiting, there have been many videos that have shown that is not exactly the safest thing to do. But in this video, I want to bring up three points on why I believe self-driving cars are not only on their way faster than ever before, but why in five years, by the year 2020, we will see a whole lot of people not only getting used to the idea of self-driving cars, but actually becoming dependent on them. So number one, and this really relies on the companies more than us as the consumers, the production of self-driving cars. Google's been touting their self-driving car for years now. The Prius with the radar on top and their new smart cars that have the smiley face on the front and drive themselves around without even a steering wheel in the car. There's a big issue with this. You can't buy one of those cars. You can, however, buy a Tesla Model S. These have that feature where you are actually able to get behind the wheel and see for yourself what autonomous driving is like. Although it is in beta mode and it's not perfect, it at least gives users a glimpse into what is coming down the road. Now, other companies have also talked about production. Nissan has been talking about producing a self-driving car by 2020. Apple, of course, is thinking about producing their first car by the year 2018. Many other companies are jumping into the pool and saying, we want to design self-driving cars. Tesla has one out now. And it's the fact that it's out now and that people can get behind the wheel and see at least not a perfect view, but see what self-driving cars are going to be like, that is the most important factor of this all. And it leads into my second point, once you get a taste for self-driving cars, you are never going to wanna to go back. So this brings me to a little bit of a story going back to 2009 when my family and I went out to Los Angeles for a summer vacation. It was the very first vacation that we had ever been on where we had had our new GPS system from TomTom. Tom. Now, this was unlike anything that our family had ever had before. My dad, whenever he would take us driving trips to Florida or New York to visit family, he would always have maps and maps and maps all over the car and even compasses and all that. He taught us all of it. I still even remember when he taught me how to use pay phones to call collect, but that's another story. Basically what I'm trying to get at here is once we were out in LA, by the third day, he was relying solely on the GPS. He knew where we were going, he just had absolutely no idea how we were going to get there. But the GPS knew, and that's what mattered. And it was the fact that we got to our destination over and over and over again with minimal work from him or my mom or from any of us. And also the fact that the GPS was able to get us there in better ways than we could have. It could reroute us if there was traffic or an accident, take us on to a different way to get to our destination. And it could always, always find a faster way than we would have originally have gone. 
The same goes for autonomous driving. Once you get behind the wheel and you actually let go and let the car take over for you, that's going to change the game completely. No more are we going to be thinking we're panicked whenever we get behind the wheel of a car. It's simply going to be us thinking all we have to do is enter in our destination, press a button, and we let the car take over. And very much like GPS in the beginning, Teslas are experiencing some problems in beta where they are either taking people literally into traffic or having incidents where they're almost crashing on the road. The same happened for GPS. Just look at people who back in 2010 or 2011 would follow their GPS off the road. And the GPS wasn't even the one driving. And finally, it comes to this, and this really falls on the shoulders of consumers more than anyone else. It's how cool the cars are. I love Google. I love the fact that they were one of the first companies to start spearheading self-driving cars. But the fact that they put it in a Prius and the equivalent of a smart car, that's not going to sell. The reason Tesla decided to go the electric route in a very sporty car before trying to make a car that regular people could afford is because they knew a regular car would not sell. They had to start from the top and work their way down. So you got the Roadster, you have the Model S, the Model X, and pretty soon we're going to have the Model 3, which will be the baseline Tesla that normal people will be able to afford. Same goes for all of these other companies like Apple, Nissan, Mercedes, all of these companies that are putting forward really cool looking cars that can drive themselves. That's what's going to be able to get cars into the hands of all these people and they will tell everyone they know, you have to try self-driving cars. They are amazing, they look cool, and they're completely effortless when it comes to trying to drive them because no more driving. And of course, I could keep this video going on forever about more points on why self-driving cars are clearly the better path to go, reducing accidents by upwards to possibly 90% that could save tens of thousands of lives on the road every year. So many things, but these three points are some of the reasons why I believe that self-driving cars will not only be in existence and be on sale by the year 2020, but there will be a huge portion of the population that will actually be relying on self-driving cars. The elderly, people who can't drive for themselves, people who are having trouble driving. But my overall thought on Tesla's autopilot, this really is the beginning of the end of humans driving cars. I can clearly see that by the year 2020, there will be a whole lot of people who will be thinking, how did we ever get by? driving the cars by ourselves. Just like in the year 2015, where my family and me and many other people I know were saying, how did we possibly get by without GPS? Well guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of Tech for Thought. More of them will be coming hopefully in the future. If you guys like this, of course I'm going to continue it. If not, then this will be a one-time deal. But like I said, my roommate Matt produced a video this was actually a video that we produced last year, but it finally came out just in time for this year's Halloween. It is called Samhain, and it is a Halloween party that's going on. Yours truly was assistant camera, grip, and I even made three cameo appearances. If you can find them all, just comment them down in the video, and it'll be really great. It was such a fun time to produce that video. It was amazing, it was so fun, the actors were great, the production was great, and it was the very first production that I actually went on with Matt. So that was a ton of fun. So make sure you guys go see it, go watch it, go like it, and go subscribe to his channel for future videos coming out from him as well as subscribe here. So anyway guys, that has been Tech for Thought. I've been Connor Mitchell, and I will catch you guys at the next video. Happy Halloween.